Hi guys, I'm Lo Wheeler, Kenner Professional Artistic Ambassador, and I can't wait to show you a beautiful minimalistic color technique today that I like to call Luxury Starburst Partial. Sam is a gorgeous representation of the everyday client. And something I really wanna to speak to is just in addressing roots like Sam's, we can go through two schools of thought. The thought of basically how can we tackle every single technical issue in this woman's hair versus what can we do today within a two to three hour time frame that will really solve some problems and set us up for success as we continue to see her throughout the course of the year. I am so excited to show you my Starburst Luxury Partial pattern. It's really gonna hit the mark and solve so many problems that we have. Not only it's gonna save us time, but it's gonna just really create a beautiful soft end result. For Sam's formula today, we're gonna use the Blue Powder Lightener in the Simply Blonde collection. This is one of my favorite lighteners because it also cools as it lifts. For our base color, we're gonna do level six in UA, and we're going to pair that with 30 volume. I mix one part Blue Powder Lightener to two parts developer for our foil application. And I did that because that level of thickness in my product is gonna help me to avoid foil slipping. Here we have Sam's money piece sectioned out. And just to reemphasize, we're gonna start here with a few foils and then bridge over the ear and then come all the way around to her baby hair section underneath her nape. Alrighty, so we're going to start with a little baby slice of a section and I'm going to weave really nice even. One tip I like to do is when folding my foil, I like to make sure I fold it, nestle the rat tail comb underneath the folding, and then I can control how tight it is against the scalp. So with tension, I draw my section down, I hold it really tight, I feather my lightener up into the scalp, and then I can control my placement. And I will continue to do three um, folds. Then I snug it like a snug bug in a rug all the way up to the scalp, and then I pinch the corners closed. It's easy, this foil is not gonna go anywhere. If you have a gap in your placement, don't overthink it or worry about it. Just weave into the section what you can and then back to back with foil. So with this section over the ear, don't be scared of it. I feel like, you know, the feedback that I've heard about that area is that, you know, you don't want it to like sit on the ear or irritate the ear or, you know, maybe concerns that the ear is gonna get in the way, but it really doesn't have to. This is a really soft piece of tissue here. So, you know, just like when you're cutting hair, you wanna move the ear, you shouldn't let that area get in the way of a foil placement.
Okay, before I get into the nape area, I want to go back and follow the same pattern on the left side. That way I get really even and predictable lift where she sees her color. So I'm continuing this pattern of doing back-to-backs uh, foils around the whole entire hairline. So what's happening on the right side is identical to the left. Today we decided to keep it really streamlined and minimalistic with two foils back to back around her whole hairline. Let's start talking about our starburst sectioning. So now we're going to look at her starburst sectioning. We're going to put a few foils really snugly back to back in her parting. That way it creates the illusion of a heavy application but not the manual labor of a heavy application. Because once we start going in and shadowing and putting on her secondary formulas, it's gonna really blend seamlessly and we're gonna create that outer layer of color that's gonna give us a really big effect in the finish. So for this weave pattern, I'm going to pick a pretty standard amount of hair up for our foiling. And then I'm sectioning it out so that the weave is just soft and heavy. It's pretty even as you can see. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that it really gives us an opportunity to break up the line of demarcation. Here's a little extra tip that I like to do when I'm working on processed blondes is I leave the tips out that don't need to be processed and I leave the sides open of my foil so that I can do that. I'm folding it in threes again, getting it nice and tight. I'm closing one side, but the side I wanna leave open, it's just there, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and copy that on the other side.
Here we have an overview of her heavy parting. And this is awesome because it really helps us to see what a really nice veil of color that this area is going to create. We're gonna take this whole triangular section and we're gonna slice it into pie shaped sections. For those clients who are flippers that like to move their part from left to right, this parting and sectioning is phenomenal because of the diagonal placement. So I'm gonna start my diagonal at the temple and then I'm going to go work my way up towards my original sectioning. where those two points interconnect, that's the goal. We wanna make sure that we lay our diagonal sections in a placement that they all can join at one central location, which is the front money piece. placement and copy it exactly the same on her left side. So here we have our fold crown placement and really everything just meets centrally towards the front. And this is so important because if it all meets in the front, when you have the natural fall of the hair and you move those pieces, it looks so seamless. So this is the front, what it looks like. Let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing in the back. Okay, as we can see in the back, she has a little bit of a natural split in her hair. So I wanna tailor my application to her as an individual, which means I'm gonna go in with a foil here, a foil here, and then a foil here. to go ahead and mix up our in-between formula, which is a six natural ultra ash. This is gonna blend everything in so seamlessly. I'm so excited. Can't wait for you to see it. For Sam's in-between color formula, we're gonna go in with six NUA, and it's gonna bridge these colors together so seamlessly. What I'm going to do is start in the back of her head from her nape and move all the way up through her crown. And then I'm going to work forwards towards her front hairline. So I am making sure with my smudge here that I'm just going just past the line of demarcation. I'm not really going that much further beyond that because then I would run into some corrective areas.
we really want to focus on blurring this line, not really dropping down the root much deeper. Notice how tight these foils still are. It's because I closed the sides really tightly to anchor the foil into place. So it doesn't matter how much I move it, they're stuck exactly where I mean them to be. We're going to complete the other side in exactly the same way and then finish with the hairline. So now that we've got her base totally blended, the only thing that's left to do is a little bit of dimension through her face frame tips. So what I'm going to do is section out a couple areas in a diagonal sectioning. I'm gonna have it kind of lay true to how it's falling already. And instead of going in and like really carving out and doing like so much placement. We're just going to consolidate this into three pieces on each side. So what I display here is gonna be exactly the same on the other side. Notice how I have left a gap between the base color, the mid shaft color, and the ends that I'm kicking out with a lightener. I think that's going to leave such a soft transition and it's gonna avoid any um, battling between my formulas. Sometimes, have you ever noticed when your lightener touches a permanent, it turns a weird color and then it doesn't oxidize quite properly? Leaving that little bit of section in between out helps to avoid that. Notice all those little fragile ends that we left out of our original foil placement. I'm gonna take the opportunity to just take my lightener, pull these slightly out further, and then just kick them out. Just like that. And I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Here's an overview of Sam's color application. We decided to keep it so simple so that when you're in your salons at home, you can have a really thorough application in a minimalistic time. I want to show you the back of her head just to like kind of speak on why we kept it so simple in the back. Sam's pre-existing color allowed us to really streamline. Because she has so much character in there, we decided that it's something that we can easily consider in our next appointment. That keeps our salon visit today so simple and minimalistic and stress-free. We're back with Sam's beautiful end results and we're so excited. We got an awesome and seamless blend between her regrowth and her ends. And we shadowed her beautiful little foils with a 7N and we glazed the rest of her hair with a 9PV.